Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goody-Kanst, Superintendent of Schools. It's absolutely the case that the foundation of any great school system are the educators and teachers who work with children and students every day in every classroom. That is also true in the Needham Public Schools. Joining me today are several teachers who daily demonstrate a commitment to their students in the NPS. I want to welcome all of you for being here. And uh, I, I want to uh, introduce and thank um, Emily Burns, who's a Pollard math teacher, uh, for being here. Shireen Yalapur, who is a fine arts teacher at uh, Needham High School. Jimmy Odierna, a math teacher and, and interdisciplinary learning specialist, which we want to talk to you about in a moment. James Harmon, who is an English language arts teacher at High Rock. Karen Ferger, fifth grade teacher at Broadmeadow. Mary Jean Williams, wellness teacher at Needham High School, and Betsy Maxwell, who is a second grade teacher at Elliott. Thank you all for being here. So first of all, deep breath, because it is the end of the school year, and that is a beautiful thing uh, for, for teachers, certainly. Um, a lot of ground I want to cover in a short amount of time, but I thought we'd begin off with maybe a highlight from this past year, something that happened or something that you're excited about, you were working on, or student anecdote that's positive. Um, Betsy, how about we start with you? Sure. Uh, in my second grade classroom, we've been studying geography, which is one of our social studies topics. And one fun way we've been doing that is we've had mystery Skype, which is sort of like a 20 question game that we play with another second grade class somewhere in the country. And the classes take turns asking each other yes or no questions such as, are you landlocked? Are you north of South Carolina? Um, and they all have whiteboard uh, maps of the United States in front of them, and they cross off states as they get answers. And then whichever class guesses the other state first is considered the winner. Then they ask each other questions about their state once we've sort of solved where we are. And we ended up mystery Skyping with about 26 States. And who, how did you make the connections with the different so, schools and teachers? There's a Facebook group for second grade teachers, and within that we made a subgroup of teachers interested in Mystery Skype. And so everyone who was interested signed up, put their state, and then you would just contact one of those teachers and say, is this a good time, you know, this week? And it was really fun. The, the most fun was when I would forget which state we were Skyping with, and so I... <laughs> was also trying to guess along with my students. Um, and they loved it. And it was a great way to teach north, south, east, west, and also where the states are. And, and meet some new friends, even if it's virtually. Correct. Uh, wow. That's great. Who else? Who else had an uh, anecdote or a special project you were working on this year? You. I think one thing that I was doing this year, uh, over the last summer, I was able to take a professional development course through Needham on with uh, Aaron Mack, who is the uh, technological specialist at our school, mm -hmm. and it was on how to use Google and other apps to incorporate into your instruction. And since High Rock is a one-to-one -one device school with the iPads, um, this year I did a lot more using the Google Suite and other apps to enhance the learning in the classroom. Um, it was really nice to incorporate other functions that I wasn't able to do just using a smart board linking videos to worksheets that kids could click on to to review material that we went over or clicking on to a, a link to a website that has like a review game and even just being able to have them report out what they've been doing through just some quick exit tickets through the Google Classroom. Um, and I also found the kids really benefited from the idea that um, if they were absent, they were able to access the work and be able to get it in so they wouldn't fall behind. I felt organization increased also because there wasn't all these worksheets and packets they were carrying around. It was you know, primarily all housed on the Google Suite or in their iPads. So you know, I was really impressed with the use of technology and how quickly the kids could adapt to it and use it in several different ways. So much now that here at the end of the year, they're working on some type of presentation based off of their book club books. And it's totally open-ended where they can do like an iMovie or a slideshow or do a garage band song about their book. And I find them more engaged in what they're doing versus just the regular always pencil to paper work right. that we've done. Right. Well, that's great. Sounds like it was a very good experience. And they were successful with it. Shireen, I'm thinking I ju we just kind of came off of the annual art show at the high school. Pollard just wrapped up their art show. Broadmeadow, Elliott, all the schools just finished. 
Um, what was that experience like uh, this year? Because I know that the work was pretty amazing. And there were also two new public art pieces. I'm yes. thinking of the two murals. What, what was that all about? So this year, we, as always, we're very busy in the Fine and Performing Arts mm -hmm. office, um, Department. So um, this year, we actually, at our art show, we um, previewed two of our big projects that we've had this year in our department, which is one was a sculpture um, that Linda Burke and her Art 3 Accelerated class designed and put together. And that was a sculpture based off of the all book read this year for The Hate You Give. And it's currently up at the high school. Um, and it's a beautiful sculpture where the students actually had the idea, they brainstormed and put together um, a cast figure that sort of being lifted up with a series of hands at the bottom and then the figure is kind of going, going up, up. And it's supposed to be about lifting others up when you yourself need that encouragement to get your voice to be heard. Um, so that was a very exciting thing for her class to be working on because they were working with casting. And for many of those students, they've never had to do that before. So that was a completely different mindset for them rather than their traditional drawing and painting. And it was really fun for the students, and I think they've learned a great deal about working in 3D with that. Um, and Kate Bergeron with the Senior Studio class, they designed a beautiful mural in the new section of the high school. And it's referencing our losses that we've had in the past mm -hmm. You know, two years senior, and um, particularly the senior class. The particularly the, the senior friends. class, yeah. and um, it was just really beautifully designed by the students, and they worked really hard to try to create an aesthetic and a style that would be long-lasting. You know, not trendy, but something that could really endure for a long time. Beautiful color palette that they worked on and really sort of voted and, and went back and forth on, and under you know Kate's direction. It really, they did an absolutely fantastic job of organizing it and finishing up in time and it was on display and it looks great. So I think everybody should come and see it. It's, it's really a, wonderful. It's a pretty, both pieces of artwork, public art, are really, really amazing and I agree. The painted mural, the colors are, it's something that will last for a long time. Yes. It's not, uh, it doesn't seem temporary or, no. or fad. It's just, no. well, you can see how it'll become part of, uh, part of the new high school um, anyone else have a, anything? Sure, sure Emily. Uh, not academic, actually. So Pollard's expanding their athletics, and this is the first year that they had a dance team. And it was really cool to see a lot of our students, they performed for the staff, and they performed at the student games, which are also new. And it was cool to see a lot of students that maybe are maybe more shy in class really get out there and you know, be really excited. Were you involved excited. in the dance team? I was not, but no. I enjoyed watching them. Oh, and yeah. it, was, it was really cool to see kids that I have never seen doing something that they're really passionate about involved in something at the school and make new connections. You know, I'm, I'm thinking in a, in a moment I want to kind of go there about uh, what, what uh, those students are doing inside and outside the classroom and how that's impacting what you're doing. Um, just maybe to bounce around a bit, Mary Jane, this, this uh, was your first year at Needham High School as a wellness teacher. How did that go? Um, tell us about that. Well, um, it, it was a, it, it's been a great year. Um, I've really enjoyed um, being here. Um, it's been challenging because um, Denham High School is not just have a PE program, it has a comprehensive wellness program. So there's a lot of content that is covered um, throughout the year. So having to get up on that content and um, be a part of that was, was a little bit challenging, but the staff at, in the wellness program were, uh, were great. Um, they allowed me to come into their classroom, observe. They shared um, their insight about the curriculum with me. And so uh, it's been fantastic. And um, Kathy Pinkham, who's the director of the wellness program, came, observed me, was very supportive, gave me feedback. And then working with the students here at um, Needham High School. Um, they're really um, easy to engage and, yeah. and participate with. It is a, uh, it really is a comprehensive, it's not a traditional physical education program. There's certainly physical education involved, okay. but really, and we describe it as a wellness program because thinking about the, the whole student and, and uh, you know, mind, body, spirit, and all of that really seems to be the hallmark of what we're, we're doing here. Uh, but your colleagues have been supportive of you, I hope, yes, and, yes. and you found them to be really uh, uh, engaging and, and pointing you in the right direction. 
yeah, that, that is definitely my experience with our wellness teachers in the district and certainly at, at, uh, at Needham High School. Um, Karen, I, one of the, the uh, you, you've been involved in a few things this year. I know uh, with Portrait of a Needham Graduate, and I think, Jimmy, you were involved in Portrait of a Needham Graduate. Um, anything that you share from that experience or? It, it's been a really interesting and exciting experience for me in terms of being going through the entire process with the community members and members of the school community as well in order to figure out five competencies that we really want to see our students achieve at the end of their 12 years in the Needham Public Schools. And I think what's been exciting for me as well is that I've shared it with my fifth grade students. And it's been really interesting to get their perspective on the five competencies and where they potentially see themselves in 10 to 12 years um, in terms of out of college and what kind of jobs that they might have and where they would like to see themselves in the world. Um, I think what's been striking to me is that I think as adults we think of the changes coming as something that is difficult for us to kind of manage because we know the world in a certain way and even for kids who are 10 and 11 years old these changes seem a little scary at times um, trying to figure out what what they might do if some jobs go away and what will the world look like for them as adults. Part of that work too is Jimmy as you know that developing a portrait of a Needham graduate was thinking about what what do we do in the classroom? What are we doing? What could we be doing to, to um, enhance or strengthen our teaching and learning and our engagement of students? One of the things that you're involved in at Needham High School, you're involved in many things, coaching soccer and teaching math and a lot of other mischief I think you're up to. Uh, you're also an interdisciplinary learning specialist. What does that mean? When I think of interdisciplinary learning, there's kind of like two umbrellas that it falls under, um, or two parts of the, that are under the umbrella of interdisciplinary learning. One is around kind of finding ways to take all the different curricular areas that we're in and, and put them together. So combining, I teach a course, the Greater Boston Project, where we combine English, history, and statistics. So it's a course where you're learning all these things together and intertwined and, and they're related. And I think the real world is all related, everything's connected. So we're kind of trying to get out of the silos of the departments and, and do more with that. So that's kind of one part of it. And then the other piece is focusing on skills that aren't traditionally taught in a typical classroom. Um, they don't fit under one department, like collaboration skills, presentation skills, uh, community outreach skills, and, and working with community members. So the, the specialist position is designed to both kind of work with curriculum and design more classes that are interdisciplinary while also supporting teachers in terms of building that collaboration piece in the classroom, finding ways to do kind of project-based learning and get out into the community or do more presentations and, and develop those skills a little bit more. So. You know, my work is trying to work with teachers as well as build more classes uh, along those lines. So the Greater Boston Project, which is the interdisciplinary course that I teach for seniors, um, I think harnesses a lot of what we developed in the Portrait of Needham graduate work this year, which is really getting students to practice those competencies and get feedback on those competencies. So getting out into the community, interacting more, you know, um, understanding what's going on in the world around them, trying to make a change, you know, being able to communicate clearly with people both in written form and uh, via appropriate emails and phone conversations and, and have a meeting and, and have a Q&A session with someone out in the community and kind of get their perspective and, oh, let me kind of understand what they're doing and, and learn from their experiences while, while learning myself. So. Well, I think um, as you describe it, that, that work around interdisciplinary learning is something that our portrait work um, suggested as something, a key strategy to help um, guide our students toward those competencies and I think that'll be the work ahead for the district over the next several years to, to figure out ways to do that, to, to break down silos. In some ways our elementary teachers kind of have that, they, they do that every day. Um, our secondary teachers don't, you know, there are a lot of things sometimes that get in the way. Certification is very, strat you know, is very regimented by the state and, and departments and, and standards, and we can't do away with those things. That content and those standards are important. How we can bring things together, though, will, will, uh, will be a challenge, but I think an important challenge. The other, the other thing that we've been working on in the Needham Schools this past year, we've, we've, um, we've been thinking a lot about it. The work is imperfect, but I think it's ongoing, and that is our work around equity. Um, you mentioned, Shireen, the book, The Hate You Give, which was the all-school read at, at Needham High School. Um, I, I want to just check in about uh, our work around equity for a moment. 
Um, you know, what has it meant to you as a classroom teacher, something that you have done regarding equity in our schools, um, if not this year before, some area you feel we or you still have an area to grow, um, and uh, anything that we might share. You know, Emily, if we can begin with you, I recall visiting one of your math classes. Um, it was a, it was a uh, what I'll call a small step. Um, we've talked a little bit about that, but important, you had a math lesson around uh, Martin Luther King's birthday, and you incorporated I'm still not sure how you, you did this, but you were talking about Martin Luther King, you tied it all to these word math problems. Um, and it was a, it was a small way of, of using the content to really enhance our conversation around culture and climate and race. Um, how did that end up and would you do that again or did you learn anything from that experience? Yeah, actually, so it, I have two things, I guess. So the first is so they, Basically, the students were answering math questions, but each answer corresponded with then a fill-in-the-blank answer with a fact about Martin Luther King, some that they could use the answers they knew to help them figure out the math, and some that were lesser-known pieces of information or statistics. And so then in our class, then we discussed, I was like, can you imagine you know, the boycott that lasted so long? Can you imagine not taking your normal means to get to work for this long? And we, we then had a class discussion, um, and that was obviously around Martin Luther King Day, but then in February, I kicked off the month where we looked at underrepresented groups in the STEM fields, and each student had, everyone on the team had to research a different person from an underrepresented group in STEM, and for the most part, it was African American people in the field of STEM, so science, math, technology, and engineering. And then they came in and they wrote an article, some were very short, some were longer, and Everyone learned about someone different, and it was really cool for them to share in small groups because I think it's important to have role models of everyone, you know, people that look like you, people that don't look like you. And why did you, and this question can really be for anyone, why did you take on something that traditionally one would say, well, it sounds like that's something the social studies teacher mm -hmm. can be tackling. How did it end up in a math class? So I took the ideas professional development this summer, and it totally changed my perspective on my life and the world, and I think that it needs to come from everyone. It needs to come from parents, from adults, from friends, from everyone. You constantly need to be aware. Need them a bit of a bubble. And I think I grew up in a bit of a bubble as well. And I think it's important for students to see that it's not just a social studies thing. It's not just when you're reading a book um, in ELA class. Who well, goes down to breaking down the silos a mm -hmm. bit and not just, you know, we'll save that for that specialty to deal with. Mm -hmm. What else? What other kind of work around equity did, did you tackle? And, um, a couple things in my classroom. One is I have flexible seating in my classroom. So, what is that? Tell us about that. So I got a grant um, two years ago from the PTC. I wrote a grant and asked for different types of seats, chairs, um, different ways for kids to work and learn because many don't do best sitting at a chair pulled up to a desk. So I have um, chairs that rock. I have yoga mats and... Um, lap desks, I have seats that move all around. I don't have any assigned seating in my classroom. And so students pick um, to work where it best works for them. Uh, and I think that's helping with equity in that not everyone can learn the same way and they can help sort of figure out what's the best way for each child to learn and go for it. And this year, um, our whole school the PTC in the fall asked all the teachers what pieces of furniture they would like to enhance flexible seating. So the whole school is trying to make a move towards that. And the other thing um, we're doing at Elliott is we're looking at our classroom libraries, especially the picture books, and we're trying to have students see if they, if they can identify themselves in these picture books. Are they portrayed? Um, and are they portrayed um, incorrectly? We have some outdated books. So we're trying to sort of weed through, get rid of books that aren't necessarily the best um, image or the best portrayal, and uh, get new books to have all the students have um, the windows and mirrors. They should be able to look at a book and see themselves in it and not just be looking at a book and seeing you know, others. So that incorporates, we have a high ELL population at Elliott. Um, we have a large METCO population. We have um, just a, a pretty diverse school for Needham, and we want all of our a lot students of, a lot to of see themselves. different languages spoken there too at Elliott. Many well. different languages. Yeah. Yeah. So we want them all to be able to see themselves in the books in our classroom. 
I think to piggyback off of that, we're doing the same in the ELA department in the middle school and sixth grade. Uh, our book club books, we're trying to find more diverse books that, like you said, can mirror or be a window for our students to see other groups that they're not accustomed to seeing. Um, we also do an all school book with Jason Reynolds, um, Ghost, um, a read aloud that we do to also, again, get more of that perspective. I know in my class uh, during our poetry unit, I tried to add in more voices and then pair it also to social situations. You know, looking at Maya Angelou poems and Langston Hughes poems, and sort of comparing it to the sort of the times that they grew or they were writing during the civil rights movements and early civil rights movements. So they can sort of see how the author's voice could be reflected by the time that they uh, lived. At the high school, we started participating in, uh, in the Fuse Mass Fellowship, um, which is Fuse the Mass. Fuse, -E. Fuse Mass, Fuse Mass, Fuse Mass. Uh, which is by the Highlander Institute, which is in Rhode Island. And they've been doing that in Rhode Island for a while and they've kind of moved up here. Uh, the Education Collaborative, which Needham is a part of, uh, is sponsoring it. So two of us at the high school became fellows where we went and worked with other school districts. And in exchange, two fellows came here to Needham and worked with eight teachers in, at the high school. And uh, the goal is around personalized and blended learning. Um, and blended learning is a way to kind of harness the one-to-one -one technology that we have. And then the personalized learning is really about differentiation. Um, and so we focus a lot in that program. And we, so we had a lot of teachers here at the school really think about like how do we tailor things to the individual students in our classroom like how do we help our students meet the curriculum that is in front of them while also kind of having choice over what they're learning and how they're learning and I think that's an important piece of the equity work that we're doing in terms of like not everyone learns the same way not everyone has the same styles people have different interests different backgrounds and how do we meet the students where they are and help them kind of learn in in ways that are best for them whether it's from their cultural background or, or other needs that they have um, and so this was kind of our first step in that in, in that pool a little bit as a school system we're, we're renewing it we have another fellow who's going to join next year and we're going to continue at the high school we're hoping to do more at the other levels I think as we in the coming years but it was it was a really eye-opening experience for me to really think about well what am I doing in my classroom that's helping all my students individually I'm not just teaching to the middle I need to find a way to you know help all the students I need a way to make engage all of them um, which in a math classroom is, is ultra challenging sometimes. Um, but it's also, you know, it goes beyond just the math. It's like, it, how do you, you know, get kids excited about what they're learning? You know, do I make the decisions on everything they should be learning all the time or do they get some of the choice um, in terms of what they're learning about and, and kind of creating those freedoms that allow them to get more excited about the learning? It, it, it's interesting to hear that you're all thinking about, it sounds like you're thinking about, you know, what, what do your students need? Um, whether it's seating or whether it's, um, you know, the uh, learning experience um, and, and, uh, and also what, what can you provide, whether it's textbooks and, and uh, literature that reflects who they are um, is, is what you're all doing. I wanted to, for just a moment, um, touch on challenges in the classroom with our students. You know, I'm thinking about there are a lot of things out there that impact our students and you are dealing with them on the front lines like never before. Social media, stress, anxiety, you know, family dynamics. Um, what's happening with, with our students? What, what are some of the things that, that you are seeing? I think one of the, I think two of the things that I've really noticed in the past um, couple of years is that there seems to be a great shift in students feeling very singular about their education where they have a goal and their goal is to get to the best possible college right and that is the purpose of them going to school um, and while that is very important um, I think it's important for us in the classroom to also structure activities and to create opportunities and learning experiences where students think about their own place within the community as well and the responsibilities that we have as community members and as neighbors and as a larger group um, as a whole. So I think one, I mean, that's one of the things that I've really noticed is thinking about having students consider that, and it kind of ties along with the portrait of a Needham graduate as well, is thinking about sort of that collaborative piece and how they can actually go out of the classroom or be outside of their learning, their structured learning environment and think about the things that they are learning within their classroom and taking it out. And, you know, 
being out in the community and doing things in the community that allow them to really connect with other people. It's not just in Facebook, right, or Instagram, but to really make connections with people and do it in a way that we can foster empathy and fostering a sense of, just a general sense of community. I think that's one thing that I've noticed that I feel like we really need to be doing a little bit more of. Um, and then I think the other thing that I would say is that while we've worked very hard on resiliency at the high school, I think you know for the past couple of years we've had a lot of different initiatives where we would be talking about resiliency. I think um, the idea of having students um, be able to articulate what they need um, and be able to consider what their, the impacts of, I guess, I'm not really saying this correctly, but <laughs> the, things that they, the things that they need and how it affects others. So I guess it goes back to sort of that empathy mm -hmm. piece, right? Well, and, and, and having students help make some decisions about what yeah, they Yeah, and about, they... right, the things that they, like making those decisions about what they need to do for themselves, but then also how that's going to benefit others that are going to be around them. In the last little bit of time we have left, Karen, Mary Jane, what, what have you seen in your students? I know you're new to Needham, but not new to teaching. What have you seen with students that's changed or that you're, you're thinking about when you think about our kids today? Um, so I think very much like what she said in terms of students being very focused on um, where they're going to go um, after, after high school and the stress that's related around that. Um, I, I see a lot of and I think some of the tools that we have in wellness in terms of looking at um, things that you can do to um, yoga, things that you can do to help calm yourself, breathing techniques, all of those things that we're trying to um, give our students those tools so that they can use that um, to kind of quiet some of that anxiety that they're experiencing. I think what's really interesting and I think more valuable to me now than maybe it once was when I started my career is building a classroom community that we have conversations about these things. We have conversations about um, the, the level of stress, the impact of technology on kids' lives, and um, being able to create classroom communities where there's acceptance and value of everyone in the classroom community, um, whatever they're bringing to the school. And how do we do that with our students, and how do we train our staff in order to feel um, comfortable managing more complex students? I, I think there's a lot that we need to do to support our teachers to help meet some of the challenges of our students. It's resources is one thing. It's also rethinking some of the way we're doing we're doing you know current practice. Furniture, a small thing, but an important thing and a powerful thing to help change the mindset and, and the experience for a child. I have like three hours more of questions for you, but we have run out of time sadly. So just a real quick check here. Summer plan, real quick. Hershey Park. Hershey Park. Painting and spending time with family. Lake George in New York. Okay, James. Quebec. I work on a farm. Washington, D.C. Excellent. Teaching my oldest son how to drive. Wow, <laughs> wow. I think everybody wants to do it except what you're doing. <laughs> Our teachers in Needham are so dedicated and, and professional um, and guide the young people in Needham in a way that I think is just remarkable. Um, and you think about inclusion, you think about how we can design classroom experiences that meet their needs, and it's, it's very much appreciated by the community and certainly uh, by your superintendent. Thanks for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you. And have a great summer, of course. You too. Thank you. Thank you.